Well, it's been a couple weeks since I've been down here at the shop, and the first thing I worked on today was getting this three quarter inch MDF plywood on that's going to be acting as sort of a spacer for the three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood that is going to be acting as the tabletop. I figured that having that little bit of extra material is gonna give it more rigidity in case if we want to use this for more workbench style applications, which knowing the way we typically use the shop might be a reality. I am also planning on having some sort of edge material going on top of this. I talked about using edge banding for this end grain over here, but maybe one by material, either some sort of hardwood like maple or something a little bit easier to work with like poplar, um, just to kind of clean it up and hide that end grain of the tabletop. We ordered the Bosch miter saw, which is actually right there out of frame that I'm going to be putting up here and figuring out how wide of a platform it needs to sit on over here. I want to start getting the other side mounted and ready to go. Again, because of the time constraints, I'm just going to get as much done as I can, but it will be nice in that we have a little bit more tabletop workspace. And once this miter saw gets into place, we can put the old one up front with the other job site tools. I had to add quite a few screws through here since this has quite a bit of bow to it. We might be using this tabletop as sort of a workbench at times. I'm going to assume that this top piece is going to be a bit more sacrificial. And so I'm not going to use any glue or anything to hold it down, just screws from underneath. So with all that out of the way, I'm just going to keep attacking this. I'll show you the miter saw and kind of get a sense of what I want for width and work from there. Okay, the Bosch miter saw is right here. I have it set up here just so I can get a sense of how wide of a platform I need to leave between the two cabinets. The um, rough width of the platform currently stands about 27 inches and to make room in case I need to move out the fences or if I need to make cuts, I figured that about three and a half inches on each side should be just about right. I also have to take into account the poplar or hardwood I end up edging out this tabletop with. And so with this being 27 inches and about three and a half inches on each side, that leaves me a 34 inch opening between the two cabinets. In case it wasn't obvious, the top of this platform is going to be flush with the top of this cabinet once the other piece of plywood gets put on there. And so with 34 inches, I need to move this out about three quarters of an inch and that will make it so I can attach that cabinet carcass to the wall and put the MDF tabletop on there, then start to look into adding the final tabletops as well as building out the platform for this to sit on. I'm going to measure 34 inches and start attaching that carcass to the wall.
Now that the miter saw is in its temporary setup and usable, I can get rid of the job site miter saw and put it way up in the front. Obviously there's a lot of junk over there, but my dad's been cleaning that up and getting that organized. I'm gonna keep attacking these drawers. This is quite a big station, and I think one of the next plans is to, one, build the fence, uh, two, build the banding in the drawer fronts, obviously after all the drawers are put in, and three, build in a cabinetry that holds our drills and charges our batteries. Obviously I took out that line that led over there, and instead of keeping this conduit out and available, I'm gonna run that through the back and just have the Romax go out to the back, tie in uh, an outlet back there, and then have another one over there because looking at that joiner way behind there, I might store it right there and then pull it out if I need longer pieces. But this so far feels really great. There's a little bit of bowing up on that plywood right there that I've been trying to put weight on to kind of balance it out. But after checking the plumbness or the uh, parallelness of those sides, they seem to be pretty well in check. I added obviously those boards underneath that are lined up with where the bumpers are. And so the weight is transferred evenly and there's not gonna be any bowing in the wood. <clears throat> after checking the plainness across the whole front, I got it pretty well set. I accidentally mounted that side a little bit lower, and so this side required more uh, cards. But from the fence to the front is nine and a quarter inches, plus three quarter inch front for the banding is going to uh, give me 10 inches of cut space. This, let's see, what is this cut? Since it's the dual bevel, it can probably cut pieces up to 15 inches. And so I should have no issue with the center of mass tilting it over or causing any issues like that. So this should cover just about all cuts needed. I mentioned this before, but we have a bigger dust collection system that we are going to have mounted outside behind there. And what the purpose of that is going to be is having it run the lines out the back and then just feed them through the front. And so while this uh, vacuum is not the most ideal setup. This is a good temporary setup for shop 1.0. What I'm also happy with is that since I got the tabletops in and all the bulk of it built, the only piece of material I have left is a five foot by four foot piece of plywood. So I used to have all the saw horses and all the sheets of plywood right there. I was able to break that down and open up some space. These two are the vending machines, which are almost clean. We've just kind of been doing some other things. But now that that's opened up and the miter saw is gonna be out of here, this whole area is gonna be a lot easier to maneuver and work in. And as I continue to build out the drawers, it's gonna be easier and easier to find and put things away. As a reminder, the saw blades are in there. They kind of look the same from before. Um, I just threw the tape in to hide the seams until either we have the backer board, which will hide it. Along here, I'm gonna have a piece of wood. So if you notice that it was kind of cut a little weird, that's not gonna matter. I'm gonna be having a bigger piece of plywood hide the front and then have another decorative piece of poplar or whatever along here. So it's gonna be piece by piece. And as I get the other things built in or start adding scribe molding, I can pull out the tape so it looks cleaner and better. Seeing as there's probably going to be a piece of plywood to hang things up like our levels, squares, chisels, and all the uh, woodworking hand tools, I don't know how much of this is going to be actually fixed. Cause yeah, you can see it definitely leaves kind of a mark, but that's pretty much it. Again, these are six feet on either side of cutting space, plus 17 inches from there to there. So you can cut pretty big stock on either side.
Well, cuts really clean and it glides super easy. But as the reviews kind of showed when we were looking into what saw to buy, the dust collection isn't the best, but that's kind of be expected. Once we get a three inch adapter onto this or we build out some system behind there that takes care of it, that should all work itself out. So as far as a rigged up system that can kind of work, at least for right now, this is a pass. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm pretty happy with everything I was able to get done and I hope to see you next time. Thanks.